While retirement is generally seen as a time of relaxation and self-focus, God calls us to love, serve, and help others for a lifetime. He has been preparing us for this retirement season literally our entire lives. In retirement, countless Christians enter a state of spiritual dormancy, not knowing how they are called to have an impact for God's kingdom. The Retirement Reformation seeks to encourage and empower the 50 million Christians approaching or in retirement to embrace the calling God has been preparing in them. When the world says it's time to stop, you can begin to have your greatest impact. Welcome to I Retire For Him, the mouthpiece of the Retirement Reformation, where our goal is to journey from retirement to reformation so you can say, I retire for him. Reaching out to the 50 million Christ followers who are already in retirement or on their way to retirement, you've tuned into I Retire For Him, the mouthpiece of the Retirement Reformation. I'm Jim Brangenberg, joined by my wife, Martha Brangenberg, today on the on the show. And we also have the founder of the Retirement Reformation, Bruce Brinesma, and his wife, Judy, as we talk about the impact of the culture on retirement. And today we're going to focus on all the different cultures in the United States of America and all their different perspectives on retirement. And how does that impact us as Christ followers and our pursuit of retirement with the American dream pushing us one direction and the Bible pushing us another direction and our culture, the one we grew up in, pushing us in another. Bruce, I love the fact that you're always wanting to take a different journey on on every one of our shows and where we go with it. And I love the fact that you said, Jim, I want to talk about the fact that each one of us grew up in a culture within our family, within our uh, demographic group or whatever, with a, with a perspective being pour, uh, poured into our minds, molded into our minds of what retirement would be like. How do different cultures and their, the view of cult, how do different cultures view of retirement impact those in retirement? What are you seeing? Well, we see it, of course, in the United States, we talk about it being a melting pot and it, Definitely yeah. is. Matter of fact, the whole issue of immigration, which has been so divisive over the last number of years, is just an example of that. And so how do the different cultures, so for example, in the Afro-American culture, my Afro-American friends tell me that the idea of savings and the safety of things like banks and investing is something countercultural to them, that they are in the process of beginning to. Well, our whole idea of providing enough money in retirement requires that you have a different mindset about your money and about your resources and what you're doing. Uh, there, the, the, in the Afro-American culture, the family takes care of each other right. and they don't move away from each other by and large. All right, now let's go to the Asian culture. Again, a totally different area where there is great respect for their elders yet in that um, in that in in that culture uh, other cultures obviously not so much uh, and you can take each one of the of the divisions in our country and they each have a different perspective yeah. and trying to find a, a homogeneous solution to something that is that divided is very difficult well, well that's when we're letting culture drive the conversation about retirement versus the bible drive the conversation now you and judy uh, judy you and bruce have have traveled all over the world you guys have seen lots of difficult. Do you know how many countries you guys have been to? 63. Okay, so 63 wow. countries. So you've seen 63 varied opinions on retirement. What are some of the things you've seen in other countries? Oh, my goodness. Um, I don't see retired people when I think about going to other cultures. Is hmm. that right, Bruce? Well, I, I think think of some of the small towns that we've been in, whether it be in Eastern Europe, uh, be in Asia, where you're walking down a, a very narrow, almost like an alleyway, but a street, right? And there, sitting in the window, is an elderly woman, mm -hmm. and she's looking out of that window as we pass, and so she is. That's you know, that's her family, and that's where they are, and so I think we see that. I go to Laos, I go to Asia, and, uh, and, and there you will see the older person still physically working mm. because they, have to, they are needed to be able to support the family. And so the idea of retirement is an even, even right. part of their culture. Martha, you lived a year in Venezuela. 
Uh, and you also grew up in a heavily Scandinavian family where I grew up in German Italian world. What, what, what did, first of all, what did you view in Venezuela as far as their perspective on retirement? Um, you know, as a teenager, I wasn't looking for all of those kinds oh, of things. Oh, you're at looking the time. at the Latin guys. But I get that. Okay. I do know that their culture is very family oriented right. and so very much multi, multi generational in homes, taking care of each other. You know, and I think that I just was, this is a dilemma in a good way because of life expectancy, right? Um, so we're at a place that we've never expected to be because people had to work just to, you know, we talked about it last night, a, a farmer that just is a farmer because they need to feed their family. You know, the, their purpose is to um, work to sustain life. And so we've changed, our whole world has changed because we can sustain life very easily by doing other jobs and paying for things. And so this whole sustenance, um, is really like what how are we going to be in that time period in our life and the, i love the fact that different cultures treat it differently because we can learn from them right mm -hmm. we if we're so self-focused that we forget about the um, seniors in our families then we're we lose that legacy we lose that connection so um, that's one of the things i really remember about you know in south america just the family orientation of it I think in my own family, we'd always had a great respect for our grandparents and that connection to them. Um, they didn't have as long of a retirement, but they were all entrepreneurs and, and had, they were, you know, I remember seeing them in right. working situations. I just remembered when we were, we spent some time in Greece and I remember asking our guide, it looks like they, all these houses here are all three stories. Why is that? Oh, she said, that's very simple. The young couple with the young kids are on the bottom floor. When they get older, they move up a floor. And when they move old, older yet, they move up one more floor. So that the on the lowest level is the family with the kids. The second one are the first level of grand, grandparents. Yep. And the next level is the third. And so that's the way that the housing yes. reflects the culture. I thought that was a fascinating way for to for me to get my head wrapped around how you deal with those different cultures or those mm. different circumstances so let's within look at, the culture. Let's look at the biblical perspective on all this, because really what we're trying to do is we're trying to challenge an entire generation, or actually several generations of, of Christ followers here in the United States of America to recognize that retirement is not about, it's not about you. It's not, it's not about them. It, it's about others. And our, but yet our culture today tells us that everything that happens, it's all about me. You know, we've got, we've got so many issues. We've got, we've got political issues and social justice issues and, 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 and uh, sexual orientation issues. You get, you got ethnic differences, you got immigration issues. You got so many things that are challenging us. Yet those are all distractions from the job of the retiree. The retiree in this country has such I mean, you, you look at you guys. So you guys have been married almost 60 years. So you got 60 years of, this is what marriage, it, what it takes to stay married, 59 years. You've also been working. Bruce, you're still working full time. You've been working 60 years. This is what, this is the things I've learned. And so many people want to know what you know, but in our culture, we've taken the chronologically superior and shoved them off in corners. And we've taken the young people and put them in charge and there's a disconnect between the wisdom. When we come back, I really want to talk about how do we reconnect it? How do we impact the culture, reject what the culture is saying we should do in retirement and embrace the biblical pattern, which is wisdom gets passed on to the generations, one generation to the next with intentionality. You're listening to I Retire For Him, the mouthpiece of the Retirement Reformation. We'll be right back. The Retirement Reformation wants to come alongside you as you navigate in each stage of your retirement. Our online resources include our blog, our downloadable books, and life planning studies, as well as membership and coaching options. Go to retirementreformation.org and use these resources to begin the transformation of your retirement. Journey from retirement to reformation, so you can say, I retire for him. That's retirementreformation.org. Now, back to the show. Hey, welcome back to I Retire For Him, the mouthpiece for the Retirement Reformation. 
As every as we do in every middle segment, Bruce Brines, but we always bring in a guest to share a little bit of their retirement story. Now, we bring bringing back a repeat guest today as we're together in Fort Myers, Florida today. We're bringing in a special guest, my father-in-law, who has just embarked on a major 18-month journey alongside Martha and I. Ted Haynes, welcome back to I Retire for Him. Well, thank you. I appreciate being here. Well, we're always glad when we can be here, right, Ted? Amen. <laughs> absolutely. So just good to be my, anywhere. Actually. Any, absolutely. Good to be, if someone says it's good to see you, and my answer is it's good to be seen. Amen. So remind us, Ted, how old are you? I am, I'll be 89 in December. Well, I've got, I'm looking forward to, can I be as bright at 89 as, as you are? Because I'm only 80. So between the two of us, you know, we still got work to do, don't we? We do. One day we'll be older in the country if we combine, you know. We, we combine, we can do that. <laughs> so, you know, you've been on a journey with, with Jim and Martha in, in, in helping to share some of your history and some of your stories in, in the book called I Retire for Him and in the book called I Work for Him. So of the stories that you shared, was there one or more that really stands out to you that, that could really speak to, uh, that could really speak to our audience? Yeah, there there is one, and that is the story about Jerry. Uh, Jerry. In fact, I had breakfast with Jerry yesterday, and uh, we met at our uh, favorite spot. And um, Jerry is a, is a, a working man. He's shy about being around people. I'm one of the few people he enjoys having conversations with outside of his wife. And Jerry has... Um, purchased some homes and he's fixed them up so that um, lower income people can live in them, mostly Hispanic. And he charges them $300 a month and they can live there. And he's uh, now has about five homes like that scattered around. And that's his mission project. Well, you know, one of the things that's so encouraging about that is, is because so many of us ask the question of, you know, what does God have for me next? And, and unfortunately, there's, as, you, as we talk about on our podcast so often, you know, there's, there's 40, 50 million Christ followers that are asking what's next. And here Jerry has found what God has called him to do to be, you know, what's next. Um, how, how, how do you think we can encourage more people to ask that question and then follow up and actually do something like Jerry's doing. Well, I think sometimes they need a little push, you know, like um, these books offer a great push because um, they're talking about uh, things that have happened in the past, and yet Jim is building things for the future. I mean, these are this is a great work that he's done here. Well, and I would say that, it, it, that God's done it. And, and really when audiences, if we're sitting down here, just want to make sure you know. So Bruce Brines, but the founder of the Retirement Reformation and really Ted Haynes, the founder of I Retire For Him. As we launched I Work For Him eight years ago, um, Ted, Ted says to me, well, Jim, you know, I don't work for him anymore. I'm retired, but I retire for him. I'm like, hey, there's something going on with that name. That actually works. And as we've developed that over the, the years, Ted, you even have an I Retire For Him shirt on today in the studio, that that has really, it, it's turned into a movement. And when we found out about Bruce several years ago, you and I found out about Bruce, and we're like, we should check this out. And now we've really merged the, the pursuit of uplifting Christ following retirees all across the nation between our two organizations to help them know that they can live with intentionality in retirement. In fact, that they should, and here's some ideas on how they can do it. Bruce, you've got an organization that's really fully equipped on like all kinds of courses and written materials to help people get through that process. And Ted, you encouraged us to write a book, to do a podcast, and to take that even further. And we're doing this all together, and that's just in, in, in you know collaboration within the kingdom. But Ted, this was something that's near and dear to your heart. When you retired, uh, a little over, let's see, it was 98, so that's 23 years ago. I mean, did you ever imagine that you'd be authoring a book that gets released when you're 88 and a half no. years old? No, I didn't. I didn't. But you know, as you're talking, I'm thinking of a pastor that I had in confirmation class. And he gave me a life verse. It's uh, uh, Isaiah 40, 31. And it talks about uh, they that... Uh, will run and not be not weary, weary right and rise up on eagle wings and so forth and he wrote a book 
in his late time like myself. And the name of the book was something like On My Way to Retirement. I think it was a funny thing happened on my way to retirement. That was it. Yeah. William E. Berg. And uh, I realized by reading it that there's no, there's no biblical basis for retirement except for the Levites. That right. They were they retired at 50, but they were hacking up animals until then. <laughs> we had that conversation before. We did. We did. As a matter of fact, to, to find out that because of longevity, and, and God talks about, you know, when we read through Proverbs and, and we read through, um, you know, any, any one of the, it, it, in Psalms, where David talks about, you know, God will bless us with a long life when we follow his commandments and we walk in his ways. And so that long life is available to us. Uh, let's call it 30 years. As a matter of fact, somebody asked me the other day, when are you going to retire? And I said, I think 104 <laughs> is, 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 I think, the, the right year. Uh -huh. uh, and hopefully that's also going to be the year when I go to, you know, go to heaven. And, uh, but, but that there are so many things that we can do. And, and when Christ put the church together, he put the church together because he knew about the Teds and he knew about the gems and hopefully he knew about the Bruces and that in fact, we can, we can make an impact on the lives of so many who are now in a, in a world where they would follow Solomon's words of, of meaningless and we can change that to meaning. You know, Ted, inside I Work For Him, you talk about your story of how God revealed to you your lifelong passion of professional photography and, and how God did that. And in I Retire For Him, you really talk about after you sold your business, what God has done with you these last 23 years. What's fun is that these books can be gotten out, out, the, out there on Amazon, I Work For Him or I Retire For Him. It's the number four, but also on our website, iworkforhim.com forward slash bookstore. And also on Retirement Reformation's website, right, Bruce? Absolutely. Well, and by the time this the podcast gets out there, they'll be out there. But Ted, how cool is it to build a document for not only your kids, your grandkids, your great grandkids? How many great grandkids do you have? 17, 19? How many? Yeah, I, I lose count. Yeah, it's a, a ton of them. That you're documenting this for your great great grandkids and your and and other people's great great grandkids. You're teaching them, hey. Retirement has got purpose. I have enjoyed 23 years of purpose in retirement. I mean, how cool is that to have your legacy going on in writing? Well, I, honestly, I'm humbled. I, I see my name there. Never expected that on a book. Uh, but, you know, when you think of a book, uh, this could be Ted's life, and this could be Jesus. And when, on that final day, I think Jesus will tear the cover off of his book and put it over mine. And based on that, I will get into heaven. Mm. Beautiful. That's a that's a great picture. I'm going to hold on to that one. That is that is well said, my friend. We'd like to encourage you to get a copy of "I Retire for Him," and, and really the subtitle on it: "Unlock God's Purpose for Your Retirement." Very different from B Bruce's great book, "Retirement Reformation." Inside, I retire for him. Just real practical stories of. Here's if you're if you're retired and you need to work. Here's some ways to put your faith into action. If you're retired and you're done working, but you're living in your neighborhood, what what can you do to put your faith into action? What does it really look like? And then maybe there's you're you're retired and you're looking for some real purpose. And here's some organizations that desperately need you. I retire for him, and the Re retirement reformation needs you. So check them out online. I retire for him. Unlock God's purpose for your retirement, and I work for him. Change the way you think about your faith at work. Both of them authored by Ted Haynes. Right along, Martha and I. Just fantastic books. Love to have you guys join us out there. Hey, you're listening to I Retire For Him, the mouthpiece of the Retirement Reformation. And we'll be right back with more on I Retire For Him. It's time we stop looking at our retirement years as 30 years of vacation, leisure, and self-gratification. Let's take control of our retirement life plan and build meaning, purpose, and intentionality into it. Go to retirementreformation.org and click on the word manifesto. We invite you to make a retirement declaration to yourself and to God. Sign the manifesto and start changing the way you think about retirement. Retirementreformation.org. Click on manifesto. Journey from retirement to reformation. So you can say, I retire for him. Now, let's get back to the show. Hey, welcome back to I Retire For Him, the mouthpiece for the Retirement Reformation. As we're talking about 
cultures and different cultures perspective on retirement. And we all live in neighborhoods or in communities where there's lots of different cultures represented. You know, a lot of people say lots of races, but I got to tell you, we all trace back to Noah and his wife and their three sons and their three wives. We all go back to the same descendants. We're not a different race. We all have the same genetic sequencing, just different melanin or melatonin on the skin or whatever that is. It's not melanin. What is it? Whatever. Mm -hmm. Different shades. We're all different shades of tan from dark, dark, dark tan to light, light, light tan, like a guy like Bruce, who's from, who's Dutch. <laughs> all right. But we, but here's the deal. Our cultural perspective shapes our thinking about retirement, but we're all Jesus followers. So our thinking is supposed to be shaped by the Bible and what the Lord has said. Uh, Romans 12, two talks about this. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world. This is the New Living Translation. Don't mm -hmm. copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Bruce Brinesma, the world is telling us retirement's all about what we're escaping from, and we get to have vacation for 30 years. But that's not a biblical perspective, is it? Certainly is not. As a matter of fact, let's go, let's stay with the Bible. I think that's a pretty good source. Oh, okay. <laughs> and whether we're talking about Solomon or any other things, but let's go to what Jesus said. And, and as you, as you go to the retirementreformation.org and you take a look at the retirement reformation manifesto, and then you look at the verse that's associated with that. And it's John 15, 16. And what, what it says is that, and this is Jesus speaking, you did not choose me but I chose you and I chose and I called you to bear much fruit, fruit that will last. And whatever you ask in my father's name, he will give it to you. There's the marching orders that cut across all of the cultural mm -hmm. elements, cut across all of the divisions that we have. And as Christians give us those marching orders on what we are to do, unfortunately, the, what we see in our churches is in fact silos that keep the generations apart. We're organized by age and never do one. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, Jim, you've heard me say this a number of times, but that what the church tells seniors is two things. Number one, don't stop giving. Yeah. And then secondly, don't be grumpy. And just stay out of the way because we've got important people to work with. So we need that cultural change that Jesus was talking about, that bearing of fruit and the inter interrelationships between the generations to be represented in our churches and the way we think about what it is that we're called to do. So what shifted the cultural thinking in your generation that shifted it from respecting elders to pushing the elders off in a corner because they're in the way? What shifted that thinking? Where did that come from? Because, because when you were a kid, you didn't have a grandpa that was 80 years old, did you? Yeah. You know, my grandparents both died. My grandfather died at 59 and my other grandfather died in his late 60s. They didn't live to be 80. But what shifted that thinking and, and how, just answer that question. What, do you know? Here's at least one perspective. It was the change in technology where in fact the, the, the difficulty of, as you grew older, to stay connected to the technology mm -hmm. and its value and the younger generation being so connected to the technology, it says, well, if you're not connected with this technology, you are irrelevant. Mm -hmm. All right, so we got to push back. Oh, against... and uh, one other thing I just got to add. Okay, go ahead. And I, it's, it's this, is that when wisdom and knowledge came from someone who was experienced and senior, now it comes from Google. Oh, <laughs> wow. That's true. There's a whole other topic for a whole other day. Martha, go ahead. You know, I just had a thought. A lot of times we are the way we are because somebody has modeled that for us. If we have generations that didn't have this senior of a living um, family, we didn't have that modeled. There was, you know, a lot of times the end of the, a generation was a surprise or it came very quickly. Mm -hmm. You know, we, um, we're in a very different place today because of you know, the, the length of life lasting longer and not having that example. <clears throat> so really, this is an opportunity to have a new conversation and to say, okay, as of right now, it doesn't seem like we've been handling this situation very well. How can we be a better example for future generations to live with purpose in our retirement and to not be put on a shelf 
and not to be set aside, but to use all of these years of life experience for good. But this is an American conversation, Judy, because in other cultures, as you mentioned before, they're not shoving their elders off to the side. They're embracing their elders. They're, they're, Bruce, you said they're building houses around their elders. How do we unshift this culture? How do we bring respect for, I mean, we have respect for elders. Our president right now is 78. The speaker of the house is 80. Um, the speak, the, the leader of the Senate in his, in his seven, late 70s. And we, our country is being led by seniors, yet when we go into the local church, Judy, are you guys in a small group with just uh, people that are your age? Yes. Yeah, because that's what they, that's what they say. Mm -hmm. So, Judy, how do you think we could shift this culture to start intermingling the generations and reject what the culture is saying? Well, how much do we need to change it and how much do we just need to accept it? I... This conversation brought to mind, uh, oh, three, four years ago, uh, we have a large group in our church of young mothers that come in, you know, they're not all church members, they're from the community, young mothers. And they decided they wanted to sprinkle some older women in there, uh, you know, with so they, we could impart our wisdom, you know. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a great All idea. All right. So I'm at this round table with maybe 10 of us. I'm the only older one. We call them chronologically superior. Well, <laughs> <laughs> my table mates didn't think so. <laughs> I, want, I had a really hard time um, getting them to pay, even pay attention to me. I mean, it was, it was really surprising. They wanted to talk about their kids, mm -hmm. which I remember I want to talk about my kids and I want to learn from my friends how to be a better mother. Like that was all there was. Yeah, sure. And then I was going to die, I guess, or something. Well, <laughs> I finally did that. You know, I, you know, I just inserted myself and told some funny stories and, you know, they kind of got with, with, and it was fine. And I felt like, well, I, you know, do I have a place here? to continue doing this and no i don't want to do this i have other things i can do you know and so i didn't want to pursue that even so though i saw that as an opportunity to to teach them how to learn from someone who is older i did not pursue it uh whether that was right or wrong doesn't matter for this conversation that is a way that we can mm. um but you gave it a try. And, you know, I think that's one of the things that um, a lot of us have to do in different stages of our life is say, Lord, I'm going to try something and see if it's if it works for me. And um, although that was a great idea um, to have that, you know, there's a lot of young women that don't have a next generation that they're connected to or that they have the same faith or that they have um, somebody that they can look up to. And uh, you may not have been that person, but you gave it a try and somebody else might step into that role. Um, but I think that it is really a wonderful thing when you pursue and say, okay, God, what do you want me to do? And how can I mm -hmm. serve? That's true. And, and then willing to be able to step out. Yeah. And so give yeah. it a try. And yep. to understand, to remember that when I was that age, I wanted to talk to my friends of art. Child raising sure. tips. And, too. Well, sure, and, it, because and, they're away from their kids for the very first. I mean, they want to, when they're at those kind of groups, like a mops kind of a group, uh, their, their kids aren't there. So they get a chance to just <laughs> have fun with their friends. I mean, I, I get it, but, what, but yet it's, go ahead. So it's always a matter of moving in or accepting and moving on, you know, but there definitely is a place for us and there needs to be, otherwise our lives become meaningless. And there's such an availability uh, issue, Bruce, because most people don't live nearby their folks anymore. And a lot of people still have folks alive, but with divorce spreading families across the country, there's such a desperate need for mobilizing retirees to invest in the next generations. How can Retirement Reformation help? Retirement Reformation can help so simply by uh, making the pathway for people to do that exploration of what's next available to them, whether it be uh, using the Retirement Reformation uh, Manifesto as a conversation point with your kids or your parents. Right. Uh, being open to uh, the study guides that are there. 
to, to be able to take you through the conversations that you need to have with yourself, but guided to be able to come to conclusion about what is next for me. I think if, if there was a question, Jim, that we could that we could put associated with I retire for him or the retirement reformation, it would be this question, what's next for me? And we'll take on that challenge in lots of podcasts in your future. So stay tuned to all of the I Retire For Him podcasts. You can get a hold of them on all the app, all the podcast channels that you can think of. And of course, right there on our website, retirementreformation.org and iretireforhim.iretireforhim.com. You've been listening to I Retire For Him, the mouthpiece for the Retirement Reformation. We're a whole bunch of Christ followers journeying from retirement to reformation. We're just trying to figure out how to do this when we get there so we can say together, I, I retire, retire For, for him. him. Thanks for listening to I Retire For Him with your hosts, Jim and Martha Brangenberg and Retirement Reformation founder, Bruce Brinesma. I Retire For Him is the mouthpiece of the Retirement Reformation. Most Christians tend to follow the world's pattern of rest and self-pampering during retirement. However, in your retirement, you can be focused on God's unique call to love, serve, and help others. This can be your best season of life if you take advantage of a life's worth of knowledge and experience and combine it with a greater freedom of time and money and invest it all in the generations both preceding and following you. The Retirement Reformation is encouraging Christians to find and follow God's call in all seasons and aspects of life, especially in retirement. Take time to sign the manifesto at retirementreformation.org and explore the wealth of resources available on our site. Join this movement of God and journey from retirement to reformation so you can say, I retire for him. Go to retirementreformation.org.